Hi everyone, it's Tom here. Ooh, don't look outside, the weather's crap. Just disregard it. Today I'm making Daryl Dixon's jacket cookies. It's from the book The Walking Bread, not sponsored. Instead of making flapjacks like they did, I'm going to be making cookies. For the ingredients, you need... Why are you doing that face? 227 grams of butter. Put the bowl down. Thank you. 384 grams of plain flour. 301 grams of granulated sugar, half a teaspoon of salt, a teaspoon of vanilla extract, a teaspoon of baking powder, and two large free range eggs. Okay, I don't know what that was. <laughs> to start, put the flour, salt, and baking powder in a bowl. Here is the one teaspoon of baking powder. And if you if you like me at this point, you'll realize that it's months out of date but we'll use it anyway, because you're only using a little bit. Now for the teaspoon of salt. Yes, a teaspoon. That's clearly more than a teaspoon. You're not seriously going to put all of that, okay. Now, gently mix together with a whisk until well combined. Now for the butter. Using a mixer or wooden spoon, cream the butter. Why is he pulling faces at the mixer? Cream the butter. And obviously Tom has not let the butter soften like you're supposed to. And the result, I'm afraid to say, is a clogged mixer. But creamed butter. Now just scrape down the sides. <clears throat> With a out of date Christmas themed spatula. Now add in the sugar and mix the sugar and cream butter together until well combined. Yep, that mixer is becoming more and more clogged. The next thing that you need to do is, um, he's telling you to wash his hands, which you probably should have done that at the start before cooking Tom. No, hand sanitizer, even bubblegum flavoured, is not the same thing. Moving on. Now we need to add the eggs. Yes, that's the bowl. Jesus. Add each egg at a time, but you need to add them one at a time. After each one, you need to, or just add them both, that's fine. Anyway, after each one, you need to make sure that you mix and scrape down the sides accordingly. And now he's realised that he wasn't meant to put two in at the same time. Well, you're an idiot, that's why. Okay, now you just need to mix it up. Ooh. That's curdled, and it looks like scrambled eggs. Yours should not curdle. But if it does, just keep mixing it. It will work out. And adding the flour will thicken it up, it's fine. Okay, now scrape down the sides and stir a bit by the looks of it. <laughs> and get annoyed. Now add the vanilla extract. One teaspoon. You're smelling it, that's a bit weird. Oh, that's very gloopy. How old is that? Okay, drop it in there so you can mix that up. You don't need anything special to mix it up, just work it in and he's tasted it. Well, you're not supposed to taste it on its own. Okay, mix that in there. Oh. Oh, what has he found? Something that shouldn't be in there. And it's a bit of eggshell. <clears throat> okay, let's just move on from that. <laughs> Now add the flour. Do this in halves. For this, I wouldn't use a mixer. I would fold it in with a metal spoon. You, the folding technique is an E-shape, or you can just use a mixer. I mean, I wouldn't use a mixer, but obviously you want to use a mixer. See, look, no. Look at that, look at that. It's clogged, even more than it was before. Yes, now use a metal spoon, and he's spilling it. He's spilling it everywhere. 
Okay, next. Add the next half. Don't look at me like that. Add the next half. And keep working the dough until you form a dough that you can shape with your hands. Towards the end of the second half, you might want to get your hands in there because it's going to become very hard to work the flour in with a metal spoon. Okay, yes, now take that ring off, it made you look weird. Pick up the dough to form a ball. Pick up the dough to form a ball. Thank you. Okay, so now that you've formed a dough ball, nearly bent the camera, that's fine. Wrap it up in cling film. I know cling film can be tricky, so put it in the fridge and it'll be easier to take off. Get some cling film. Please. Oh, look at you. Doing it great. I mean, I wouldn't have put it on the table. It's probably not the best idea. Now, get your dough and put it in the centre. Where is it? It's not coming out. And there it is. Now you can wrap up the dough in the cling film and put it in the fridge for around an hour to chill. It needs to be an hour at least to chill. Yes, that's really amazing, Tom. Now, put it in the fridge to chill for at least one hour. Once out the fridge, remove the cling film. Or if you're an idiot, like he has, you've put too much cling film on, so you need to use a knife. Having trouble? You're taking an awfully long time. Do you think you could hurry up? And he's... Yep, he's given up. Flower the surface so that the dough doesn't stick to the surface. And we're back for the cling film. With the knife again. Next, cut the dough in half because you will have a lot of excess, so you can save some and freeze it. Make sure you flour the dough itself. And another important tip is to flour the rolling pin so that the dough doesn't stick to the rolling pin. Roll it out to the thickness of a one pound coin. Using the jacket template I made, link in the description, cut out the shape of the jacket with a very, very sharp knife. You can indent the dough with the template and cut the dent out, and I find that worked a bit better. Or if you somehow have managed to find a jacket cookie cutter or make a jacket cookie cutter, just use that. Yours should look a bit better than that. Next we're going to line the pan. You can do this with butter. I'm using cooking spray with rapeseed oil. It's just a little bit healthier. Get 
give that a rub make sure you get all the cracks and all the sides and the indents and cut out a square of baking parchment or baking paper and stick that on it put each cookie onto the sheet The next step is to put the cookies in the freezer for around 10 minutes or so and this is so they don't lose their shape in the oven because when cooking they'll want to spread out. And take them out, making sure they're nice and firm and hard. And put them in the oven at gas mark 4 or 350 degrees. You should really clean that oven. Tom. As I said before, the excess dough can be frozen and it will store for around two to three months. After eight to 12 minutes, take the cookies out. They should be golden in colour, not anemic like those. And after a few minutes of cooling, transfer them to a cooling rack so they can cool for a further 10 minutes. Make sure the cookies are hard enough to put them on the rack because if you put them on the rack and they just come out the oven, they're still quite bendable, so they will want to bend around the racks. To prepare the icing, we need five large eggs, one teaspoon of vanilla and 512 grams of icing sugar. Now for the eggs, crack each one, put that bowl down, take it off your head it's disgusting. Clean it. Now, crack the eggs one at a time into a bowl. Now for, you, for this you only need the egg whites. So what I did was take a plastic bottle and push onto the egg yolk and squeeze and it will suck up the egg yolk. Now I didn't, he didn't get any footage of this because he's an idiot so it does work, trust me. Whisk the egg whites for two to three minutes until frothy. We don't want to make a meringue, just frothiness. Now for the vanilla, we need one teaspoon. It's quite clearly a tablespoon, but I suppose I'll have to do. Now for the icing sugar. Oh yes, mix that in. Put it down, we don't care. The icing sugar, thank you. You want to add this a few tablespoons at a time and mix well after each addition of icing sugar. And he spilled some. Keep mixing and after a while it should look like that. For the food colouring, you want to use a gel. I'm using a liquid. Liquid is fine, but you should use a gel. Now, you should only need a few teaspoons, but this idiot hasn't realised he made it in a very, very large bowl. So he's ended up making a very, very large amount of icing, which means it will take a very, very large amount of food colouring to turn it black. Excessive amounts of black food colouring, especially liquid food colouring, will make your icing taste gritty and horrible. So the lesson is to make icing in small batches if you're going to colour it. And he's put the whole thing in. Great. This idiot should not be allowed to cook. <sighs> Look, it's taken hours to get it to that colour. And even though it's only got grey. What an idiot. Next, transfer the icing to an icing bag or squeezy bottle with a small rounded tip. The tip needs to be the smallest one you have. I'm using a squeezy bottle because it gives you a little bit more control. Take a cookie and making sure the icing is very, very thick, which is, isn't because of all that food colouring he added. Outline the jacket a little away from the edge and let the outline dry for around 10 minutes or so. This outline will act as a barrier to prevent spilling. 
after 10 minutes or so, you can begin to flood the center of the cookie, which Tom's doing. You're supposed to wait 10 minutes. Now it's going to spill. After you've flooded it, use a toothpick or the tip end to smooth it out, and you can add some flaked almonds in the shape of wings like on Daryl's jacket. And now you're done. This has been a disaster, but thanks for watching anyway. They look really gross. Bye. Hi guys, if you like that video, give it a thumbs up so I know to make more. And if you didn't, that's fine too. Make sure you subscribe to my channel on the right and you can watch my last video on the left. Comment down below giving me your suggestions on what videos I can make or what to make next. Don't forget to subscribe. Aren't I beautiful?